Borzov Duck bringing you another deck tech, and this time we're going back to standard. Who else is tired of this standard format? Mm, show of hands? Eh, kind of me. Another uh, anti copter deck tech list for you. Uh, this one's been done a few times, but this is just kind of my take on this particular arc archetype, and I think it's a, a blast to play actually. And this is going to be kind of a this deck is kind of a budget-ish uh, aggro deck. It is, uh, opposed to the other, you know, standard pillars of the format, it is more on the budget list. It does have a couple Gideons in there just to add some competitive flavor. But uh, as opposed to a lot of other decks, it is relatively super cheap. Plus, you could, you know, sub out the Gideons for, for literally any anything else, some more removal or whatnot. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to start with the mana base, as we do each and every time we do one of these. We have a playset of the Inspiring Vantage. That is the Kaladesh Fastlands. You know them, you love them. Playset of Needle Spires. We need our red-white mana. Plus, uh, Needle Spires in this deck could act as almost like a, another win condition because we have so much equipment and the 2-1 double striking body is relevant. It's a little hard to get to the 4-plus uh, mana to activate the Needle Spires uh, on a regular basis, but it does happen. We're running one of Hand Weir Battlements. Mostly, we don't we don't want a ton of colorless utility lands in this deck because we do need the white and the red mana on time. But I do like the uh, tap one, tap it, target creature gains haste until on a turn. It's it could just be like a nice little finisher if you if you drop a big monster. White mana is a little more important to have on time in this deck than the red mana. That is why we're running. Seven planes and five mountainous. And that is our mana base. Very simple. We do have the eight dual lands, red white dual lands, and that is the fast lands and playset of the creature lands, the one of utility land, and then the rest are basics. So, yeah, basically that's it. Bloopsh. So now we're going to get into the rest of the deck, and we are running a playset of the best one drop in standards, da 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 da, -da Inspector Thraben. So, yeah, these, these guys are just fantastic in this deck. It's a squire body, one for a one, two. You drop it, you get, you get the artifact, and that is hugely relevant to the rest of the deck. So, of course, it is an easy include here. We're running a playset of the Toolcraft Exemplar. This guy is a fantastic. One for a 1-1 one, one at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control an artifact, Toolcraft Exemplar gets plus 2, plus 1 until end of turn. If you control three or more artifacts, it also gains first strike until end of turn. Uh, usually this guy is always turned on as far as the first strike goes. And he just comes down as a huge beater. One for a 3-2 with first strike is nothing to sneeze at. So we are running a full play set of him. So again, he ties well into our 3 of an expector. Inspector, excuse me, and then we are running a playset of Wild Naka, I mean, uh, Inventor's Apprentice, haha, <laughs> uh, one red and one two, Inventor's Apprentice gets plus one plus one as long as you control an artifact, and that is uh, pretty easy to do, especially with running our playsets of Bone Saws, and very easily have a turn one, two, three, which is very fantastic, so we are running a full playset of our Wild Nakadal. Next, we have everyone's favorite bulk rare, Stonehaven Outfitter. He is an anthem. He or she is an anthem all to herself. She is one and one white for a two-two. So she's a nice bear. Equipped creatures you control get plus one plus one. Whenever an equipped creature you control dies, draw a card. So we actually have some card advantage in our Boros deck, which is uh, not usually the case. But these guys are absolutely fantastic, and they deserve a entire playset. And it's worth noting, once you have one out and then you have a couple artifacts out, her ability does stack. So if you do drop a second one, your whole team gets another bump. So it's almost like a little mini intangible virtue stapled onto her. So, I mean, these are just fantastic bears. And then most arguably our most powerful creature, most aggressive creature in the deck, is the Weapon Trainer. 
aka Furiosa from Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, she is one red, one white for a three, two. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus zero, oh, as long as you control an equipment. So you don't even have to have them equipped. You just have to control it. And guess what? They're so cheap. I got a place in foil. Ah, foil Furiosa. Oh my gosh. This deck is amazing. And that's it. I mean, this deck is so super cheap. You could you could uh, afford to kind of pimp out this deck, bling it out. Uh, you know, it's, it's equipment. It's, it's people wearing watches. So it makes sense to bling it. And then we're running just a single one of Mommy, uh, PNLR, two and one red for a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever she enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 one -one colorless stopped her artifact creature token with flying. And uh, she has some other abilities. She could pump uh, she could pump an artifact creature. She could sacrifice an artifact, and the creature can't block, so you could push through damage. She's fantastic. Um, I'm only running a one of. It might be uh, correct to run more than that, but uh, so far I've been happy with just the one of. Kind of like her commander deck, or tiny, or tiny leader deck, or whatever. So, okay, now we're uh, done with the creatures, so we're in the non-creature uh, part of the deck, and this is the equipment portion of the deck. So we have a four of bone saw, like I said before, turns on our, our buddy, the tool uh, toolcraft exemplar, turns on our inventor's apprentice uh, right away, our everything. It's, it's just fantastic. Um... And again, they're so cheap, I got three little foils of this stupid card. Uh, you know, who who wants that? So yeah, Bonesaw, zero casting costs. You know, free spells are always great, uh, especially when it's when it's relevant to the rest of the deck, and it gives your creature plus one, plus one. Next up is one of my favorite equipment cards in the deck, and this is Inventor's Goggles. Very relevant with how many Artificers you have in the deck. Uh, this one is one and equips for two. Equipped creature gets plus one plus two. And you're like, ah, oh, that's not that great. It's a little bit better than Bone Saw. It does pump your butt though, and it also uh, goes right. So whenever one of your artificers enters the battlefield after this is in play, it could just jump right on there. So for for no equip cost at all. So it is a fantastic card, and it deserves a entire playset. Plus, just to cast it for one is it, very nice. Next up, we have a two of Captain's Claws. One is two for a one equip cost. A equipped creature gets plus one plus so, so it's a more expensive bone saw. However, whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one core ally creature token on the battlefield, tapped and attacking. So that is awesome. Uh, it just kind of grows. You go super wide with this card. It's like super bone saw. So we're just doing the two of there. Next up, we have the two of Stitcher's Graph. Um, this one's actually overperforming for me as well, so uh, that, it's a good problem to have. Is uh, I have a couple of equipment that I do want to go up on, but I just I haven't figured out what to take out yet. But Stitcher's Graph is also another one that I am considering adding another one. So we have two of it's one and also equips for two. Equip creature gets plus three plus three. The downside is, is whenever this creature attacks, it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. But, so it takes a turn off, basically, but just swinging for, for that much and giving that much power and toughness that quickly to something, especially if you throw it on a Stonehaven Outfitter or, you know, your any of your guys, because they, they all kind of get pumped with more equipment on the battlefield, it, it's just huge. So that 3-3, three, three, that early, with all the other pump effects that the creatures give themselves or, or other creatures is is huge. And then of course, if for any reason this comes unattached on that creature, so you can't move this equipment around, you have to sacrifice the creature, but that's, that's not a huge deal. So this is one with uh, that, that's really good also with, with PNLR. When you drop it, you can put it on the Thopter token, get in with some big flying damage as well. So Stitcher's Graph, two of, maybe go up. And that's the equipment. So now we're gonna go on to the rest of our non-creature spells and we're just as far as removal goes uh this is not a control deck by any means but we do want to clear out the stupid copter and we do want to clear out other aggressive threats so we're just running the full playset of galvanic bombardment it's this generation's kindle for all you old folk out there and it is a fantastic removal spell and then just the two of gideon just another win con and you know i don't need to sell you why gideon is amazing but you can't, like I said, you can take uh, Gideon out if you want to go a little bit more on the budget side. You could uh, add a little bit more removal. You could put in like two stasis snares instead, or maybe some declaration in stone, or go up to that third Stitcher's Graft and that third Captain's Claws. Um, you you could play around, throw in some Stoneforge Masterworks. Those kind of 
uh, underperformed for me when I had them in there. Um, so that's that's kind of why they they didn't make the cut. Um, we have Servo Expedition also might be a good replacement or some uh, another one might be Strength of Arms. So there are some good budget replacements for our old pal Gideon. Uh, if you want to just go straight budget, I understand. But if you want to go a little bit more optimal with uh, our, our buddy, uh, then, and if you have them, run them. So that's it, guys. Uh, just a quick aggro deck tech. I try to do this one as fast as this one plays. Uh, and, and that's uh, probably it for standard deck techs for a little bit. Uh, we'll be shifting back to modern on the next one, and then uh, we'll see what the, you know, by that time we might be into either revolt territory and uh, might have to see what comes out of there. But until next time, guys, this is John, a.k.a. The Yours I've Done, and we will see you next time.